That's honest, open, and transparent If you didn't know, now you know So sit back and unwind As we bring the vibe and a little bit of glorious sunshine To your heart, soul, and mind Your lovely host, Hot Donna, will be with you in just a few moments. But while you wait, go ahead and set an atmosphere of peace in your space. If you can, cut the lights down low, get your hydration on, vibration zone. Cause tonight, you're about to receive some delicious food for your soul. for joining us and in just a few moments we about to turn the heat all the way that's right it's about to go down right now on hot topics with donna show your virtual love by smashing that thumbs up and heart icon as many times as you can and without further ado, I have the distinct pleasure of introducing your host, the one and only Hot Donna. Thank you guys for tuning in with Hot Topics with Donna today. Hey Gwendolyn, how are you? Thank you for tuning in with Hot Topics with Donna tonight. So tonight I have another guest. Um, I'm excited about interviewing him. Hey, Gina. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Nisi. Thank you. Hey, Alicia. So I am going to go ahead and um, invite my person and we're going to see if we can get him on the live and um, hopefully he'll be able to come on. Yep. So, I'm going to send him an invite. So, I already sent him the invite. So, I'm going to see if he can uh, come on. I'll wait to see. Hold on. All right, so <clears throat> Oh yeah, you best believe that. You best believe that. I can do that. So, I am waiting. I sent him an invite. So, thank you guys for um tuning in with Hot Topics with Donna. I am your host Donna Taylor. Hot is honest, open and transparent, and that's what we just do on this show. Um Okay, Le Alicia, I will so uh, I'm just going to wait for my guests um, to um, accept the um, invite. But no, last night was an amazing, amazing um, interview with Sheena Jones. Um, she is one of my friends, model friends, but she's like a sister as well. And I just, you know, thank God for her and, you know, her sharing, you know, some of the things that she's going to through with, you know, having a son that's AU. Um, having rheumatoid arthritis and then we learned something there's a tuberculosis called legacy tuberculosis as well and so you know like I said you never know who I'm going to have on because everybody has a story and sometimes you know we just don't know how people are dealing with different issues of their own and so um, I am still waiting I sent my guest um, Jacob Anderson that's who I will be interviewing today. So I am waiting for him to do the invite, to accept the invite. 
Um, I hope you guys are having an amazing day. Thank you guys for joining me at 7.30. Um, like I said, um, my daughter is doing cheerleading, so she's finished at 7. So I have to go pick her up and then get ready to do this live. So hopefully um, Jacob will come on in a little bit. Hopefully he can um, see the invite and just come on. So I hope you guys have a great day. Have you guys been, what have you guys been doing? Talk to me today. How has your day been? I know my day has really been good. I'm working with some little ones again. Because, you know, for those of you who don't know, I'm in high school level. And being back at this daycare makes me miss my preschoolers. So, I don't know. But I do. I miss the little ones. I miss the little ones. Hey, Cynthia, thank you for joining. Um, so I'm just going to wait and see if um, good Gina is kind of hot in here. I've been trying to rush. So I'm waiting for him to come on to see if he can get on. So I'm going to try again to see if I can send him an invite. Hopefully he will. Hopefully he'll get on. I don't know. So I'll just wait. I'll just wait. I I can't see him. Um, Jacob, if you're on here, you I already sent your invite, so you have to go to your notification. And accept to join my live. Um, Jacob, if you want to, just request to come on my live. Because I sent you the invite. So, um, But I can't see him. He hasn't accepted my invite. That's what I'm waiting for him to do. If it's easier, Jacob, just, um, I see you. Okay, there you go. There you go. All right. Hey. I love it. You're here helping me and guiding me because, you know, um, sometimes it's just, you know, this technology, you know, gets away from me. But, yeah. All right. So we're going to wait until I see his face. Are you on? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can you guys hear me? Gina, if you're still on here, Alicia, Lynetta, if you guys can hear me, just give me some hearts because um, I don't know if he can hear me because he have earphones on. So if you I guys, am. okay, can you hear me? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lynetta. Thank you, Alicia. Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. So are you going to come on camera? Yes. Can you see me? No. Mm -mm. We cannot see you. Hi. <laughs> now I can see you. Okay. Okay. All right. So tonight we want to welcome um, Jacob Anderson, also known as King Jacob, to Hot Topics with Donna. Um, we're going to um, learn some more about him. I'm going to tell you a little bit about him. Um, he's a radio host. He, um, the CEO and founder of Kinder Music LLC, which was branded in 2009, specializing in branding, marketing, and radio. 
and he's the executive media reporter for I think it's at how you say it, Edits Magazine. At Access Magazine Publication. Access Magazine, which is located in Columbia, South Carolina. So, and he's also has his own podcast called Chatterbox with King Jacob. So, um, uh, tell us about you, Jacob. So I just gave them a little piece of who you are. So let them know where you um, reside and just give them a little background about you and then we'll go into the questions. Well, I reside in Salula, South Carolina, which is about 45 minutes outside of Columbia. Um, I started my music journey in 2009 in Washington, D.C., which I lived up there for about uh, about 10 years. Mm -hmm. And I started in the club promotions and street team promotions. And uh, I ran into uh, a young fella, you know, that used to work for DreamWorks Records. So he brought me on to help, you know, do promotions in the streets. So my very first event was the What What Noriega Tour, if you're familiar with hip hop, you know, who Capone and Noriega. So um, then from there, I I went to managing indie artists because I felt that indie artists was never given a chance mm -hmm. because they didn't have enough money or they didn't know the right people or they just didn't have a platform to really showcase their music. So right. I started helping them understand the business Started developing my artists because if, if an artist don't have a identity with his sound, right. then um, he could never get noticed on how he's perfecting his craft or how she's perfecting her craft. So, um, um, so since since we're gonna go to your music, so that was the question. So, with you being um, in the music, how how did you pick people or pick artists? to be a part of your label, to be a part of your brand? Did they have to have a certain type of music for you to even consider them? Um, I, I have an ear for music, so, and I look at each market. I look at the down south market, mm -hmm. the up north market, which is the east coast, you know, the upper part of the east coast. I look at Midwest and I look at the West Coast market. So right. if you have one sound that I think can fit into one of those markets and you're marketable because Im image is everything to me. Right. And so I have to be able to look at your image and say, oh, I can set them in a fortune in front of a fortune 500 company or front of an investor or right. can some, do somebody want them to represent their brand? as far right. as a spokesperson for their brand. And so to me, with music, your image has to coincide with the music. You know, so if you don't- So talk about image, you, so like, do you do like your homework, you know, as far as like seeing how they have been marketing themselves or how they carry themselves on other social media um, platforms? Of course I do, of course I do, because okay. that means everything. So if I present you to someone else in another business, Right. They're going to do their research. And so if I don't do mine, that's going to make me look really bad. So, of right. course, of course, so. <laughs> right. So do you currently have artists that is signed under your um, your label? I do. I have a music duo by the name of Lost Souls Guy O. Mm -hmm. And uh, we just recently broke 100,000 screens on Spotify. Oh, wow. That's awesome. Yeah. So, so you, you know, we're... Check we're that out. Check it out. Yeah, yeah, at lostsouls.o on Spotify. So you can check the music out. And actually, man, lostsouls.o was talking this weekend. We actually want to do a free concert for suicide prevention. Because there's so many younger people and older people that commit suicide. Mm -hmm. And family members and friends don't know why. Because it right. seems like their life is on the up and up. Or it can be a stage of anxiety and depression where they hide mm -hmm. it very well. And right. so we really, really, really have to, you know, um, if you're a musician and you have a platform or a model or an actress or whatever you are, whatever charity that, you know, you think that you can be a part of to raise awareness, I say that you do so because you have that platform. And so we also want to do something for breast cancer and children with autism as well. Right. And so right. just, just, you know, just people don't understand how much this means to people that go through, you know, family members that mm -hmm. go through people in the family that commit suicide or even with the women who 
go through their breast cancer. Um, right. You know, that's that's something that changed their whole outlook on life, and it and it changes the way they navigate through life. And right. so, so, I mean, go ahead. But so, have you been affected in any way with suicide or either breast cancer? And for you to want this to be your first um, event? Um, actually, I've actually I've been in a part of breast cancer awareness and um, suicide. Um, mm -hmm. I can say that I had some friends, I had some family members that went through that. So I see how emotionally, how emotionally drained and right. mentally draining it was for them to lose that family member through through taking their lives. So, yeah. but with the breast cancer, I've seen a number of women. I have uh, I have I have an auntie that went through it and. Mm -hmm. He's, she's beat three different type of cancers. She's had cancer three times and she's beat all of them. Wow. And so, and so, you know, with, with, with that being said, I just got to say, you know, um, praises go to all the man upstairs. So it's, oh, it's yeah. Yeah. God, God yeah. is, God is remarkable. He's good. And, um, as long as you keep your faith strong mm -hmm. and, and you walk that direction and, you know, just try to walk a righteous path. And great things are happening for you. So, Absolutely. but yeah, um, raising awareness is mostly what I want artists to use that music platform for. I know it's a profession they want to make money, right? But you have to, but you have to make a difference to show people that it's not just about the music with you. That it and is all so about inspiring and saving people. And I'm totally against gun violence as well. So you right. know, um. I'll be doing a show this weekend, um, you know, called um, "Gun Violence in Our Black Communities." Right, right. And why? And 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 a subtitle for that is "Why Is Our Young Black Men So Outraged in Society?" So I'll be doing that this weekend. So um, what would that entail? So would it be artists singing, or would it be like a platform of? Um, you know, people coming to bring awareness. So how, tell us how that event is going to look. Um, you know. That event will look like every, every music, every form of music has to be edited, whether okay. it's country, jazz, blues, gospel, okay. hip hop, bluegrass. Right. Um, and I would definitely invite spoken word artists. I would definitely invite, you know, canvas painters. And I would definitely invite some public speakers who who really um, are in tune with you know how suicide looks and right. what what is the counseling measures for families after they have family members to commit suicide and so right. you know I would I, I would definitely want that to be something that us in the black community as long as with every community around America look at right. suicide is really really strong right now and you know we don't really understand what people go through why they go through it but i just feel like we have to be advocates to yeah. help the ones that's affected by it so you know uh charity events is something that i love doing and it's something that i'm going to be doing more of since right. we are since we are somewhat somewhat better than we was in 2020 and right. so I, I definitely want to, you know, raise awareness. So how, like for your gun violence, you know, like, you know, gun prevention um, event that you're having this weekend. So how is the, how do your town, I don't know how big it is, cause I never heard of it. Well, well, actually, well, I mean to cut you, but actually um, the gun violence panel will be on my podcast this weekend. Oh, and okay. so, and and so, we're going to plan to do a uh, stop the gun violence o awareness event. So, I'll be having um, two guests out of Miami. Okay. I'll be having one, one out of Greenwood, South Carolina, right. and um, maybe I'll be having a another guest out of Columbia, South Carolina. So, it's going to be a panel discussion. So, do y'all have a lot of gun violence in your um, in your in your city? Um, no, we don't. We don't have a lot, but we have had. Um, I, I want to say too many, but I'm yeah, just yeah, saying. Yeah. So. yeah. So in the last year or so, we've had three people to get killed due to gun violence. And so, 
with that, how do um, how do the community come together when something like that happens? Or do they just kind of shun away and say, well, this is not my issue. So how, how do your community come together when a life is taken? And are these lives, are there young kids? Because right now, I feel that gun violence is on the rise with our younger boys, you know? Um. I, you know, all all the lives that was taken, those three lives that I'm talking about, all was under thirty, so wow. young, young. Wow. So, um, well, I just really think coming from a smaller town, people mm -hmm. don't don't know how to react to that because they're not used to that. Yeah, and right. so and so when you don't know how to react to something, you you're not used to it. So it's kind of like a scary feeling. Like where did this small town go to now nowadays? Because it's right. never been like right. that. No, so. So, you know, with, with that being said, with that being said, excuse me, we're trying to just raise some awareness and and see what the issue is and just trying to get inside of the minds of the youth so we yeah. can understand how they are trying to navigate through society. And, you know, the thing about it is, you know, um, <clears throat> sometimes I feel we as an adult and plus if, especially if we have a platform, you know, such as, you know, Hot Topics with Donna, you know, um, Chatterbox with King Jake, Jacob and all these other platforms. I think sometimes it's our job to push, you know, these platforms to say, hey, we must stop killing each other, whether they're black, white, or whatever the case may be, and say, we stop trying to I don't want to use the word get to the top, but sometimes we lose focus because we want to arrive. But at the same time, our young people are really suffering because they don't have people that, that reach back and say, you matter. What you're going through matter. You know, just to smile and say, hey, how are you doing today? You know, and I always tell people just a smile could make somebody not want to go take their life. You don't never know what position they may be in at that moment. And then if we treat them a certain type of way, we may be the one that pushed them on over the edge when we could have just said, hey, how are you today? You know? Right. So with your platform, are these um, people, are they going to just, once you guys talk and facilitate how you're going to do, you know, this um, event, are y'all gonna like how would you advertise that to get to get these young people out how how does that look well um how i advertise event like that um of course i use the social media plat platform with the facebook ads the instagram ads the snapchat ads um and and also you know um i think word of mouth is the best yeah the best you know advertisement and so you know I try to reach out to the young people and I want to reach out to them and, and, and do a discussion with them, you know, um, just sit down and do a discussion with them, ask them what they think and what they, what, what type of platform would they use to, to really elevate the minds of their peers. And so, right. you know, I, th I think through social media, social media, excuse me, through radio advertisement and, 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 and just also through reaching them, you know, so, I feel like a lot of times the young people can't be reached. And so if they feel like we as adults, as the older generation, don't really care about them, mm -hmm. you know, they're not going, they're not going to listen because if you weren't there for them when they was going yeah. through and now they surpassed that, they're not going to listen because, you know, with, with everything you got going on with the young people, um, society's tough for them right now. Like and who will you know, I I don't know about you, like me, I don't think I would want to be born in this era. Because when you and I, you know, was growing up, it took a village. Mm -hmm. You know, if I came to your house and I was disrespectful, your mom or whoever had permission to give me a spanking, then when I go home, I get it again, and our parents, well, um, they didn't bump heads because they were like, okay, so you showed, you showed out over there, so you're going to still get it when you get home, and a lot of times, we, we don't want to do that. It's just like you want to turn your head the other way, but you see these kids mm -hmm. on the corner. You know they ain't mean no good, but when do we stop being afraid 
of these young kids and say, hey, what's going on, man? What y'all doing? So do you have, are you a big um, influence in your city, like where you can reach younger people, especially young males? You know, I would like to say that I'm trying to be, but I haven't been back in the city. I only came back here at the beginning of 2019, so not, not that long. And okay. then pan the pandemic hit. So right. I was uh, I was in D.C. for 12 years, um, uh, the Fort Lauderdale, my area, area for about six, and I was in Columbia, South Carolina for a couple years as well. So back to my original hometown, mm -hmm. I haven't been back that long, but I do want to you know, do something for the young people, do something with them, you know, um, and cause, you know, with me being in the type of business that I am, right. I might be here to, I might be here today, but, but I might be back in Fort Lauderdale tomorrow. So, you know, um, I never can take it. You start and you, you have others that's not in your world as far as entertainment, at least if you start the foundation and you can trust someone else even when you're not there to keep it running and then, you know, start instilling in the kids and say, Hey, I may not be here next week for two weeks, but as long as they know that they can hold you accountable, that you are going to come back, I think, right. you know, will be a great thing. And like I said, right. whatever you, you know, do as far as the young people, I would be so gracious to, you know, come and it can, we can just do something really awesome because like I said, people don't want to do anything with kids because they just like, I don't know. And then they could even be your future artist for your label because our kids right. have a lot of talent and people don't know. Parents don't even know the talent that kids have. You're right. You're right. And so, you know, I would, I'm trying to do anything I can to help them. So um, what's coming up at the end of August, I have a, um, a young king and queen photo shoot session. Okay. So I'm picking... I'm picking um, three queens that graduated from high school and I'm picking wow. three kings that graduated from high school. And I'm setting them up a photo shoot with celebrity photographer, Sea Star Legacy. Okay. And you know, and after we do the photo shoot, I'm going to set them down and we're going to do a live raw in a cup panel discussion, you know, um, and it's going to be called what the youth wants from, from the older generation. So, you know. um, Alicia said, um, some kids don't have respect for authority. And she said, I love working with kids, especially middle and high school students. And Alicia, a lot of times people don't want to work with middle and high school students. And I can be the first one to say, it's not that I didn't want to work with middle school and high school. I just didn't think that I was equipped, you know, to do high school. And so now that I'm in high school, I... I love it, but I also see that we got a lot of work. We, right, right. I say we, I'm saying me, you, Alicia, you know, and the other people that's on here, we got a lot of work because to me, middle and high school kids, they get pushed. They get pushed aside, you know, because they are almost adults, you know, but we still have to reach them because one day they may be taking care of us. That's know? right. That's right. They, that's they, right. They've that's been right. taking care of us. And so with that being said, I know you um you're a radio host as well. So right. tell us about how how did you get into radio? Did you get into radio before music or how did that no. all happen? <laughs> no. Um I got into radio through the platform of music. Um I used okay. to be I used to be a, a a partner with a a label out of Chicago, Illinois called Emblazem Records. Mm -hmm. And um I was talking to a well-known DJ in Mount Vernon, New York by the D name of DJ Mike G. And um okay. he was like, "Man, you should come on the radio show, man. You got that voice." So I was right, like, right. Hmm. I said, "Okay." <laughs> so I came on the radio show and um Oh man, it just went crazy from there. So, you know, um, on that particular radio show, I was, um, you know, you're now tuned in with Jacob Tunes, your baby mama's favorite radio host. What's up? You know? So, and, so, you know. So your audience probably was a lot of females, I would say. And yeah. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes, 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 yes. And uh, today is the Chatterbox with King Jacob, which my audience is still a lot of females. Um, right, right. You know, right. you know, cause I, 
I still talk about the music business, but on that particular show, Raw Truth Radio Network, I was I was I was only music and entertainment. But on the Catabox with King Jacob, um, we talk about everything. The, somebody lost their lost their child. They lost their husband. Yeah. We we talk about how the DSS system treats black mothers. Right. Um, 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 we talk about the essence of a black man and how many black men know their true identity. Like, wow. so we, we talk about some of everything on the chatterbox. And so I'm hoping that the chatterbox go from keep it at a podcast, but I also want to take it to the next level and have my own TV show as well. Exactly. The chatterbox exactly. became Jacob. Exactly. Yeah, so, that's, so, I mean, so that's, so, that's what I'm hoping for. Who knows? We, it, who knows what God may do for us, you know? And you know, right. and just like you said, this is this is the start. Um, so what ha what was the biggest challenge being a radio host, especially when it came to um, females and their relationship? Because sometimes when women, you know, if you you know what I'm saying, it's like if you yes. Yes. If, um, how how did that affect? you as far as you know being in your city and then you see women you know that may have been in relationships but then they see you they hear this voice and then so did you ever have any confrontation you know well dealing with being a radio host yes well well donna <laughs> i would tell you this when i was living in in the fort lauderdale miami area right you know um i had a lot of women who listen to the show, you know, because mm -hmm. I used to pass up my business cards and word of mouth and mm -hmm. um, some that I, I, I worked with on my nine to five and and they was they, they would listen and um, so I had one particular female to say to her husband. Yeah, um, wow. Open, uh, honest, uh, and transparent. Right? Yeah, yeah, like, wow, like, um, you really need to listen to this show. Right. And and maybe you can take a page out of his book. And the first thing he said, so what you like this dude or something? Right. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> and she was like, No, I don't see why you would say that. But mm -hmm. I just like the energy that he brings and the real discussion that he brings about how men see their relationship and how men won't have a great relationship and can't not really truly love a woman because they really don't value love their mother first. Wow. And that's, so. and that's the key. Because, you know, I, I really truly believe the same. If you see how a male treat his mother, then you can pretty much tell how he's going to treat his significant other, you know, whether it be wife, girlfriend, because just like a father and a daughter, that daughter, her first love should be her father. You know, her right. father should be her teacher. Her father should teach her how a man is supposed to love, you know, a woman, you know, teach her, he's supposed to open the doors for you, you know, just do these things, not material things, but teach her how a man is supposed to treat a woman and vice versa, because we should be our son's first love and teach right. him you know, like, this is how you treat a woman. And, you know, and I remember when my sons then were dating, you know, I always made it clear to them. I said, remember, you and whoever you're with, you need to establish what your relationship is. Because we are emotional. Women, we are emotional creatures. So you can't just dib and dab in this with this female. Because I always made it clear and plain. Because one day, God may give you a daughter. Mm. And do you want someone to treat your daughter like you treated someone else's daughter? That's right. That's right. That's right. So. And so when you have these, um, when you are on this radio, so did you feel like, had, did you ever feel like you came between relationships just because of, what they thought you represented instead of getting to know who you are? Well, I can explain this to you right here. 
be, even before the radio, like I've always had a lot of female friends and right. I was cool with them. And, you know, um, what a lot of men that's in a relationship with, with these opposing females that I'm cool with, they always feel like um, it can't be a friendship without that male sleeping with that woman or that woman sleeping with that male. So I was just cool with them. So I had a lot of boyfriends and a lot of husbands that didn't like me and probably still don't like me, but I have never said nothing out the way to their mates. I have never right. tried to sleep with their mates. All it was right. just really solid convo, words of advice, words of wisdom, encouragement, um, mm -hmm. trying to in, inspire her to try to find some balance because when a female tells me that she's going to leave her marriage. I say, are you sure you want to disrespect God like that? Like it's sometimes it's really not about the person. Like I was like, well, well, let me ask you, ask you this. And then you can ask yourself, is this a reason why your marriage is struggling? Have you ever been spiritually in love with your husband? And wow. has he ever been spiritually in love with you? Wow. And most women would tell me no. Right. It was only right. emotional and physical. And right. so I said, well, if there's no spiritual love and there's no spiritual union there, I was like, y'all got problems. Because what, 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 what's happening right now is the ways of society and what the, what the world says your marriage should be is y'all just doing what the world say. So if ain't no right. God in it, you know, if ain't no God, there's no trust, there's no love, there is no, no honesty at all. No. And so, I'm you know. To figure out why people think that men and women just can't be friends. Because society has made us feel that, because like with me, I had more male friends than female friends. Because I could always get their perspective on certain things like why do you, why did why do y'all do this you know and and sometimes you get clarity and even though you gave me your advice it's still i had to make my own decision you and i have been friends for a minute and we have yeah. not physically met but we still conversate you know right and so when people start putting stigma on you know whether i can be your friend and i think that they keep us trapped in a box. Right. Because right. like I said, a whole bunch of females sometimes just create chaos. And so I, you know, that's why a lot of times women rather have male friends because they don't do that drama. Lynetta said everybody can be friends with the opposite. She said everybody, I can't hardly see it in my life. She, she says said, everybody, everybody can. can't, I think. Right, right. Yes. It's about the maturity. You, you, you absolutely right. But you know, it's just the society that we're living in, you know? So with that, like, so what, what strengths did you possess being a radio host? Like, what was the up part about it? Like that was more rewarding for you? Um, it's, it's really more of the message and connecting with people through the radio airwaves and, mm -hmm and letting people get their story out. Just like I told you, I want the chat about the King Jacob to become a TV show. And you may see a few celebrities on my show, but for the most part, you're gonna see the common person, like the school yeah. people, like the school teacher, like yeah. the nurse that worked 80 hours, um, like mm -hmm. the CNA that, that brought an old man back to health, um, like the right. person that's been owning the local hardware store for 30 years. Mm -hmm. you know like a, like a real estate agent you know like right. a person like you that got their own nonprofit that that you know inspire and teach young girls about entrepreneurship and how to right. how to right. be ladylike right. and how to navigate through business so my heroes are the person that i see every day you exactly. know what i mean exactly right so, and so um just to say this access magazine has just tapped in Shout out to the chief yeah, editor, yeah. Trey Martin. Hey, Mr. Martin, um, thank you for tuning in with Hot Topics with Donna. So since he's already here, we can just, uh, well, let me just ask, I'm gonna talk, we're going to talk about the magazine and then we're going to talk about um, some more stuff. So are you also um, do casting, you know, directing or whatever. Right. You know? So explain to me, because I'm like, when I was looking up you, I was like, what? I was like. 
So how does that fit? How did casting play a whole big part of music, radio? Well, and how um, and when do you cast and what do you cast for? Well, uh, the casting kind of straight off since the pandemic happened, but what right. I do have coming up, Mm -hmm. I'm in the process of writing a TV series, um, okay. and it's going to be called the Royals. <laughs> it's going to be called the Royals, and just put like it, like like you kind of old school. So, do you remember how they had on on Dynasty how they had the Carrington's and the Kobe's? Yes. yes so yes. this is going to be about a black and a white family that's rich in a particular city, and okay. how they how they came up together with the Barton system and both of them are just making an impact on the city. So okay. I kind of based this off me sitting with my grandma looking at like the Kobe's and the, and the Kobe's and the yeah. characters on Dynasty right. and looking right. at uh, Dallas and Knox Landing back in the day. Those, those are the shows now. You know, right, they right, about, right. Those, they need to bring those back. So right. and are you going to cast for those? I so am. So so we'll be casting for that spring 22. Oh, maybe I have a part of something. I'm pretty maybe, sure. Maybe, maybe I just have a silent part. Walk on, walk off. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure. So so uh, we're, we're working on that and um, also going to be working on um, a documentary called um, The Identity of a Black Man. Uh, uh, Alicia said you're going way back, and the Lynetta says sound like it's going to be dope. Yeah, but I mean, but you know what? Sometimes we have to go back and reinvent, you know, mm -hmm. because sometimes, you know, I always say, even in the school system, and I know Alicia can attest to this, you know, they continue on to test these kids, test these kids, you know, remodify. But if the test that you was originally given them, why change it? Right. If right. it's working, leave it. Just, That's right. Just, just, just leave it. If it's working, just leave it. And so here we are with this magazine, and yeah. you are the executive media reporter. Yes, I am. <laughs> and I am. <laughs> yes, I am. So uh, how this magazine came about, I, okay. I, I seen a post um, from Mr. Trail Martin about the magazine and uh he said he was looking for some writers so and i saw that I too, but i was like nah I, that ain't me I, you know but i, I, I like him right, up but i was like no mm -mm. right i hit him up and i told him i wanted to be a part of it and um you know um uh, first thing he said well we don't have a whole lot of money because we're not starting off and this is what i told him and he contested this i said brother don't worry about the money i share your vision the money gonna come five times over and and so you know that's how i i became the executive media reporter and and i when i told him i was going to send him a lot of stories he was like uh okay but when, when i sent him he was like bro you know a lot of people and then it's funny like me and him didn't really know each other mm -hmm. but when he told his mom who i was working who he's working with she's talking about she said jacob anderson the one that sing, and I and I told him instantly. I said, my dad used to go around a lot of churches and sing everywhere. His name is Jacob too, and so his mom always would plug with me through my family. And come to find out that my cousin and his sister are best friends. I didn't even know it. So wow. you know, so you know, we, we our families are connected. But uh, he's giving me a, a great opportunity, and I've been able to reach a lot of different people from all walks of life. Yeah. Yeah, and you because you know that's what I do anyway, so yeah. you know, yeah. what I mean, um, yeah. you know, I, I network like that. You want to so. be a part of that, um, writing. So, Alicia, she she writes, and I, you know, she loves to write, so she might can um help you with some scripts and stuff. Well, so, um, I'm just Alicia putting her out there on blast, huh? Well, well, she can hit me up anytime, you know, I, I'd be more than glad to talk with her, to have a conversation with her and see yeah. where we can take it, yeah, and you know. And just like, you know, when I, you know, submitted, because I was like, I'm just going to give him this short little thing, you know, because for me, it's hard when you write about yourself. 
you know, because some people, they write about themselves and, but for me, I always find, I rather say little than say much, you know, because that's just who I am. Yes, and, Alicia, and he said, he said for real, he said, reach out to him. <laughs> and so when you, when I submitted it, and you. She's so funny. <laughs> she is so funny. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, and so when I submitted my stuff, I was just like, okay, this is going to be good, you know? Wrote it, sent it to you. You send it, you text me, and you're just like, mm, I need a little bit more. And so for me, I had a hard time because I'm like, I gave him enough, but then you made me realize that people need to know who I really am, not yeah. just not just the surface, because that's what I did. I just pretty much gave you just a surface, just a surface like, wow. hey, this is who I am. And so I'm learning when I have to do my bio or write about me, I'm learning to say, people need to know who she is. Mm -hmm. And it yes. is not in an arrogant way or a conceited way, but people just need to know who she is. Because at the end of the day, I am short changing myself. I'm short changing myself. And so I saw all the articles today um, that you, um, the people that you had. And so how do you choose who to write about at specific times? Um, a lot of people say yourself. Like I've been connected with a lot of people so many years and I've been networking mm -hmm. with them. And some people I don't know, somebody in my network know them or somebody in their network might know somebody else or it might be one of my people that I haven't seen in 10 years. They'd be like, whoa, right. oh, Jacob, man, I see what you're doing and blah, blah, blah. blah. So sometimes I network with people so much I forget about who I meet and then mm -hmm. I'll, I'll get a... Uh, uh, inbox to say, hey, you remember me? I was like, well, you will have to refresh my memory because you said it was 12 <laughs> years ago. Right, right. <laughs> so, you know, and, and once they re refresh my memory, then we start networking all over again. And, you know, um, and it's funny, you know, um, just like with Mr. Martin, man, like um, so many of my family members already know who he was. And then, right. you know, come in and his, his, his mom's is my nephew's nurse. So, right. so, you know, so, so like, like I said, like God connect people and he brings people together. And, and, exactly. and I always say when, it, um, when it's God ordained and when God has his hand in it, he would take you from over here. He would take me from over here and he will plug everybody together. And that puzzle will fit. It, it, it always fits. That's right. You know, that's and, right. That's right. That's awesome that you know he allows you to, you know, do these stories because, like I said, little becomes much, and so you may start off at the bottom, but you know what? Only because you're at the bottom doesn't mean that you're truly at the bottom. It just means that you have work. You're building the foundation because it's gonna be powerful. You know, it's going to be powerful, but some people want to start up here and don't have a foundation. And then once they get so high, it crumbles because they didn't have a solid foundation to begin with. You That's know, right. so That's with right. you and him, you have this foundation, you know, and so all of it just came together. That's right. That's so right. So how many articles do you write per week, per day? How, how does that look? Well, I've been with Mr. Martin since about March, and I think so far, I probably have about, I want to say about 13 or 14 published articles already. That's awesome. So do you guys do all of the editorial stuff that goes yeah. into a magazine? You you guys do it all? Yeah, so what what I am is, you know, I'm executive reporter, and I'm a... Uh, <laughs> you know what, man? <laughs> well, that's awesome. That means that keeps you guys busy. <laughs> right, 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 right. So, um, just to tell you a little bit about Mr. Trailmore, you know, he, he graduated from the University of South Carolina. Um, mm -hmm. He does graphic design, he builds websites, he builds magazines from scratch. And, he's you know, a, he's he a has. Right? 
Yes, and, and he's a celebrity yes. photographer. Yes, yes. I, 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 did, I was researching him a little bit as well. So, yeah. Right. <laughs> Sorry, Mr. Martin. I was like, okay, I know this is your magazine, but I, I kind of, I went on your page as well. So, you might be um, next on Hot Topics with Donna. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I was, I was going to say that you're probably going to have him on your show. <laughs> yeah, so. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. I, I was looking, I, I looked him up and, um, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah, so and so, and you know just just working with him man and and knowing like he he has a very uh you know exclusive background and he connects with people so well and he's real down to earth and real open and he's open for any suggestion like um like like you like you out there close to Fayetteville like when you have your your um your event that you're going to have, what, what is this, in October or? I'm having a um, all kids um, fashion show um, August the 21st in um, Southern Pines. And it's it's going to be a fundraiser for my nonprofit. Um, yeah, so it's going to be all kids. It's, it's going to be all kids. Um, I'm just excited to see, you know, what God is going to do with that. It's called a confident me because, you know, I believe in, you know, empowering our kings and queens to let them know that, it doesn't matter what you look like, matter where you come from. You are important. You are amazing. And the sky's the limit. And we have to teach them now. And so the age is going to be from 6 to 16. Okay. Okay. So, man, I'm, I'm, I'm just telling you firsthand, make sure you reach out to him, you know, because anything, anything dealing with the youth, he definitely want to be a part of it. Well, I would love to have him a part of it. And I will, cause I want. I would like to have him on the show, or whatever. But yeah, I mean, and it's amazing that you took the leap leap of faith. Have you ever wrote before, like, or did you just take a chance um, and say, I "I'm a well, dude. well"? I started writing my own blog um, okay. about a year and a half ago. Um, okay. It's called, it's called Canard Media, and you know, I have anything anybody from musicians to the youth. Um, I did a published article. Of, uh, I, I, I wrote an article about R. Kelly when he first mm -hmm. got into trouble. Um, right. <laughs> and, did you, you know, a lot, a lot of people read the article. Huh? You got, a, you got a lot of backlash? I did. But and then I also wrote, wrote an article about um, Jamal off of Empire. He said some folks keep and all that and so I got a lot of backlash off that too but um but I also got a, little, a lot of people from other areas that were interested in the article and said to ask how long I was writing for then I told them this is this this is a new blog and they was like keep writing man like so you know um I got the blog I write for the magazine um I'm going to be also working on a book and this book is going to be solely about me and my father's relationship. And it's going to be called A Father's Prayer. And so it's going to be some real deep. Well, and so from there, we might as well go ahead and talk about your father. Because your father passed away. It's been, what, a year or two years now? No, well, ever, ever since 2015. Yeah. So <clears throat> with that transition, how, how did that affect you? in your family and your mom at that time well i mean he was he was my superman you know what i mean he was my superman and um you know it's, it's um, hard mr. Martin, you know i would definitely be reaching out to you. um hold on mr martin i would definitely be reaching out to you thank you so much for tuning in with hot topics with donna and we will um get together so i can schedule a time and you can be on this platform as well have a great night. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. All right. So, when my pops passed in 2015, it was a, it was a hard thing to deal with, you know. But um, with that being said, you know, my my, my father was a, a great man. He, he loved all his right. kids. You know, he he him and my mom was together for 40 years, wow. and you know, and so, you know, he was. He was always so when guys tell me about their relationship with their fathers and stuff like that, I can try to wrap my head around it to relate, but I really can't because right. I don't know what that feel like. You know what I mean? Right. Because right. my my pops was always there, no matter right. what, he was always right. there. And so, um, but 
just off the things that he taught me and the mm -hmm. things that we shared, father to son, mm -hmm. I do try to talk with the young people and talk to some of my friends that may be my age and still have that hurdle they're trying to get over of having a good relationship with their pops. You know, right. um, I, I tell people all the time, you know, it's not for you to judge your dad. You know, exactly. it's for you to try to do what you can do to mm -hmm. build a relationship. Now, mm -hmm. as long as you try, you know, um, that's all you have to do. But, yeah, yeah. you know, and, and I tell them, it's a lot of people that grew up with their fathers. Fathers are not on this earth anymore. Wish they could have just one more conversation with their father. Right, and so, and so, you know, that's how I go about it. But for the most part, it's been it's been pretty good, you know, because I have my mom, my sisters, and my brothers, and you know, all us a, a real close knitted family. And yes. you know, I have a I have a lot of close knitted family members, you know, cousins, aunts, uncles, and stuff like that. And so, it's been really, really, really pretty good because as I look around with a lot of my friends and a lot of you know their families and stuff like that, they they don't have a lot of great great chemistry in their family and so you know i'm i'm yeah. grateful for that and and i just really think that comes from being raised in a spiritual household it it, it does it really does right. so how did your father's death um if i mean how how did your mom handle your father's death you know because they have been married or was married so long too so how how was that for her rough really really rough you know, so with me being the oldest, I tried to be that backbone and support that she needed. And right. so, but it was, it was, it, it was really rough because you got to think to be with somebody, to meet somebody at 17, marry them at 18 wow. and be, be with them until, you know, God called them home. Right. That's a very right. long time. And so, yeah. but yeah. I, but I can tell you this with me seeing what that looks like, mm -hmm. my my out view on relationships are so different, you yeah. know, and, and, and how I view women are so different. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because being who my mother is, I just think it's certain stuff that women shouldn't do. I just know. And I just think it's certain way they should carry themselves. I, I, I think you, you had to be a, a dignified woman, class and elegance. Um, I feel like a lot of times women don't allow their intelligence to define who they are. Right. They allow the physical to define who they are. Exactly. And so when you, right. So when you allow the physical to define who you are, you're just going to get the only the physical from a man. That's it. Right. 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 And so why do you think we do that as women, being a man? Why, I mean, you know, because I know, you know, you probably have talked to women, you know, about it. So what have been some of the answers that you may have gotten from women that say, you know, they rather have that <clears throat> piece, the physical piece, and not the other piece? Well, this is what I'm going to say about women. And Alicia said, say it for the people in the back. <laughs> I know that's right. <laughs> and this is... This is what I'm going to say about those type of women, mm -hmm. you know, and then I'm going to break down the four type of women that you have, okay. you know, in society. So for those type of women, I, I think that they just really never been properly loved by a male at all. Mm -hmm. So when, when a person got to understand, you know, for a lot of people, when they're not loved by their father and... Mm -hmm. They don't know the cause. I've I've met so many women that have never laid eyes on their dad ever. Wow. And so when 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 they sit back and size by you think, be like, hmm. I how can I trust or love another male when the man that fathered me, that helped make me, I've never laid eyes on him. I've never hugged him. I've never mm -hmm. held his hand. He 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 never even said my first name. Wow. So, so you know, and I just feel like if 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 that abandonment issue is carried for so long, then they can't trust any type of male. That's 
I mean, that's deep within itself because just like we said earlier, our fathers should be our first love, teaching us, molding us, and preparing us to say, no, nope, I'm not going to accept this from you because my father didn't treat me like this. My father, you know, told me that I was beautiful. My father showed me, you know, how a man, you know, should open the door for me or never, you know, let me walk behind them. You know, we're supposed to walk side by side if you want to, you know, always leading me because that's what father should be doing, leading his daughters and teaching his daughter hey, you don't have to accept this, right. you know? But when at some point do the women have to take some accountability as well and say, you know what? Yeah, it's true that my father wasn't here, you know, whatever. But when do we take accountability? Because at some point we should be like, no, I don't had enough of this joker. I don't had enough of him mistreating me doing all these things to me. And so, you know, men should treat us like queens or whatever. But at some point, when when do we wake up and say enough is enough? Enough is enough when you understand what self-love and self-development means. And um, you know, that she experienced that, but it took me to give myself to Christ to show me exactly how I should be treated as a woman. Is exactly, exactly. I understand. Yes, I agree yeah. with that. Yeah. And so, and I think that a lot of times when they have that abandonment issue, then they have lack of self-love and don't understand where self-development starts. And so okay. when you have lack of self-love and you don't understand where self-development start, that means that you, you, you can't let go of that abandonment and, and that aggressiveness where you're blaming yourself or like something wrong with me. Why my dad didn't love me. So mm -hmm. you definitely have to have a prayer life and, and, sure. and, and spiritual growth. You definitely have to have that. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So with that being said, um, before we come to a close, so how, um, is there someone special in your life or are you just still waiting for God to send you who he has for you or, um, Oh, she said, but now, babe. <laughs> I know that's right, sis. That's my friend. That is my girl. But so, I mean, so are you, have you ever been married? I have not. Do you desire to be married? Yes, I do. Okay. So, so how, how is your approach when, you know, do you write these um, criteria for, your significant others, or do you just ask God, like, well, whoever you well, have for me, you're no. Well, actually, I'm I'm a, I'm attracted to a woman's intellect, that mindset. Right. right. To me, that's everything. And mm -hmm. you know, it's just I feel like it's a bonus right. if she's if she's beautiful and uh, and fine as all outdoors. That's just another blessing from God. Right. But right, you right. know, you know, but that but the intellect, the mindset, and the power of how she can elevate my mind as well. Exactly. Like, exactly. like can, she, can she take me higher? Can she take me to the next level? Mm -hmm. And can I do the same for her? And right. can, we grow, can we grow spiritually together? Right. So right. Once, once you can grow spiritually together, you can conquer anything. You are absolutely right. You are so, you, I mean, because, you know, at this stage now, and especially this season in my life, you know, I wrote these criteria that I wanted, you know, I'm just like, okay, Lord, this is what I'm seeking. But if he doesn't give me everything that I'm seeking, that's okay, because he knows what I need better than what Donna knows, you know? Right. And so, but the one thing that I did tell him, the guy that I have, or you send me, must love you. Because if he loves Christ, he would know how to love me. He would well, know how fact, to love me. In fact, in fact, Donna, he has to he has to love God way more than he could ever love you. Yes, 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 yes. Because then you know it's gonna be it's gonna be right. It's gonna be right. right. Because then he'll watch his tone with me. He'll watch how he you know treat me whether I'm in the house 
or outside the house, you know, because, you know, like I told you, you know, and my girlfriend can attest to this, you know, people thought me and JT just had it together because we had allowed people to see what we wanted them to see. You see what I'm saying? You know, like I said, we dress up, we used to match, go to church, right. didn't even call, going to church, come home, same way. And then, you know, I'm like, we ain't pleasing to God. It doesn't matter what they say, but we're That's not right. pleasing. To, we're not pleasing to Him because we're sitting here living a lie, going to church, shouting, and doing all of that. What Lynetta said. Clip and clap. And you know, we're going to church. You know, praising the Lord, shouting, singing on the praise team, and doing all this stuff, but yet and still living a lie. Mm living a Christian life because we wanted people to think that we had it all together. And so, like I said, I finally was like, nope, can't do it. Because then we allow God to do what he needed to do in us to get us to where he was before he passed away. Right. You see what I'm saying? And that's what me yeah. loving him, being in love with him. But had we kept this Cliff and Claire charade up, who would have known if I would have been there by his side when he passed away? That's right. You're right. And that's real talk. Who would have known? Because we're sitting here doing this monkey show for everybody else. Right. You know, and so when we set standards, and I've been in a bad place where I didn't love who I was because I allowed right. a man to dictate to me who I was and all this kind of stuff. But when I learned who I was in Christ, then my level of expectation changed. And, and it's so funny because now, Jacob, it is like, nope, don't have to put up with your foolishness. Nope, don't That's have right. to put up with your foolishness. Right. Because, and I can hear JT in my head, he'll be like, really? You didn't even put up with this from me and you feel like this joker? No. Right. Right. So when you find your person, when you find that person, do you think that you would, how, how would your courtship go? Would you shack up or would you just do it the way God expects you to do it? No, I ain't no, I ain't, I ain't no shacking. She'll live in her place. I live in my place until we walk down that aisle. I ain't no shacking. And so, so did your mom, um, so, cause your mom would not, approve of that because of no, not at all. background right not at all but god you're right alicia i mean <clears throat> and that's why i'm so thankful when i have guests like this like you come on and all my other guests where we can be honest open and transparent because you know what who are we really fooling you ain't fooling nobody but ourselves <laughs> i know because god sitting there looking okay you really that's right. But, but the thing about it is, whatever we want, we have to make sure we're in line so when God bring it to us, we'll be ready. Whether it's friendships, whether it's a job, or whatever it is, we just always need to be in line with that because God can't help you in no mess, especially when you want your hands out in it. You know, it, it's funny you say that because I was, I was interested in a chick, and you know what she told me? What? She was like, she's like, I could never talk to you. And I said, why? She said, God said not touch my anointing. So we got to remain friends. Yeah. <laughs> That's real talk. That's real talk. And you know what? And had she not had a relationship with Christ, she could have messed up whatever else he wanted to do in her life you know and it wasn't that you wasn't um good enough it's just that it wasn't you wasn't supposed to connect with her on that level that's right that's right yeah you see what so. i'm saying and sometimes you know i mean i probably would have kind of felt like whoa wow you know like why lord you know but then you if you sit back you'll be like okay lord thank you because then you may not have been ready and equipped 
for whatever assignment that was on her life. We didn't we didn't even question it. And right, now, and, and right now she is my bestie, for real, for real. So huh? Yeah, she didn't she see uh, Lynetta said she didn't want to burn because if she would have disobeyed God, just think like how that could have been detrimental to both of your spiritual walk. Because God got something for you and he had something for her. And that's amazing how you still can be friends even though you wanted something more. But you right. probably have more than you want now being her friend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we're, we're definitely uh, really, really, really close on a lot of different things that we share, man. Like um, the, the business relationship is good. The friendship is wonderful. And so I'm grateful for that. Yeah, Alicia said God is going to give you a good one. <laughs> well, I appreciate that, Alicia. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Thank you so much. <laughs> but, you know, I'm just so thankful because you and I have been rocking, what, since 2015? Right, longer. right, right. And, I, and, you know, and I just, um, she said, I, I am a widow. I have not been in a serious relationship. Read it, Jacob, because this glare is like. I'm a widow. I have not been in a serious relationship for quite some time. I desire to marry again, but I want it to be ordained by Christ. What do you do while you wait? You continue to serve God. That's all. That's all. And I mean, and the, the main thing, and you know, that's my cousin. And the main thing is you just have to make sure you line yourself up because God can't send you anything if you're not in line with his word, you know, that's right. with friendships, like I said, whatever it is, whatever we desire for God to do, he's not going to do it all for us because we have to do the work too. That's right. You're right, Lynetta. You have to focus on Christ and yourself. He's not going to do all the work. If I say, I want me a house, and if I don't get out and work, I'm just going to say, okay, Lord, I want this house to be right here tomorrow. That's I right. have to put in the work. We have to put That's in right. work. And so, Absolutely. like Lynetta said, you got to stay focused and work on yourself because he equipped us, like you said, Alicia, he equipped us with everything we need, whether it's friendships, spouses, or whatever. That's right. And so, but I just thank you for just being who you are and just being the friend that you have been to me all these years. Because, you know, when you have friends that you truly don't, have never met, you know, we've talked, you know, on Facebook, you know, message or whatever. But when you can truly have a friend that, checks up on you, you know, just like, you know, Father's Day, you, you, you know, you call and say, Hey, are you okay? Those are the friendships that mean so much more to me too, because right. when you can truly love somebody and never, ever meet, we never broke bread together, but you can still reach out and say, Hey, just checking on you and baby girl, how y'all doing? And I just want to just tell you, thank you, because that, that is amazing. You're definitely welcome. That's amazing, and I appreciate it, and I don't take it for granted, you know? Right. And I just, you know, I'm just so excited, you know, with all the stuff that you um, have going on, you know, with your chatterbox, you know, and all this kind of stuff. Um, <clears throat> and, you know, like when you asked me to, you know, could you interview me? I'm telling you, I was nervous. My friend Lynetta can tell you, I was so nervous because I'm used to being on this side. But then when I had to be on the other side, that's out of my box, you know, because right. like I was telling her, I can talk about JT's death, which I do, you know, on here or whatever, but this is my comfort, you see, but now mm -hmm. when you have other people digging, and I'm not saying digging in a bad way, I'm just saying like, okay, I need to know these things, and then it's like, right. oh, oh, dude, and, but once I got in my groove, it was good and it was powerful for me because I know I'm at a healing place. That's right. I, I'm at a healing place. And I know that Christ equipped me for this time, you know? That's right. Right. So 
you know, I'm just excited for what God is going to do in your life. If you want to do a event together, hey, we can make it. We can make it happen. I like to travel. Okay. My friends on here like to travel. We can just come together, and I can bring my girls, and we can just do something for the youth and just have a fun time. Okay. Okay. We we, we'll definitely talk about time. it. And just pour back into them. You know, we can have fun. Then we can do a panel and talk about different things. And, and just let it be awesome like that. You know, because you may have some teens that need to talk about some certain things. I can bring some of my girls. They can be on the platform. And it can just be a session with them. We don't even have to be up there with them. We just be there to facilitate, to make sure things is going to flow. Okay, that's not a problem. I would love to do it. And we'll talk more about it. Yeah, we will. But thank you. Thank you, guys. Just give Jacob some hearts. I thank you. Thank you. I love you, my friend. Um, so I told like you, it wasn't, like that, it, it wasn't that bad coming on here, right? Right, right. Pretty good. Yeah. So, yeah. But um, it's just awesome. Um, Alicia, I will give you Jacob's information um, as well. And plus my guest from last night. Um, but yeah, it's just, it's just great. And like I said, I will reach out to Terrence. Thank you guys for the hearts. I will reach out to Mr. Martin because I really want, um, to interview him as well. And, um, like I said, whatever, you know, you post, I share, and I thank you for always promoting what I'm doing. I really appreciate that. Um, and cause you don't get that too much, you know, we're right, too busy right, trying right. to be sick. We're too busy trying to hold it all, you know, just be greedy and hold it to ourselves. But at the end of the day, we are all on our own journey, but at the end of the day, it doesn't mean that we can't push each other to the next level. That's right. And, um, so I'm excited. So like I said, we, we will talk, um, and we can just start getting the things rolling. Maybe we can do something back to school or something like that. So okay. But hopefully, um, if um, Mr. Martin can, and hopefully you, you can come down, you know, August 21st, and you can just see what I do with my girls here, and we can just do it. Um, Alicia, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, like I said, it's just been a journey. It's just, it's really been a journey, but you know what? I'm, I'm just thankful, and I'm thankful for you as my friend. I'm thankful for you always reaching out and just saying, hey, you good? How baby girl? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We're, we're, we're good and I thank you for changing your time because like I said it's just me now so that's an adjustment no like you said today it's an adjustment in itself but you know God makes it work it just makes it work right. you know what? Oh, yeah. and I just you know want to thank my um, viewers that's always faithful to come on and just chit chat with us and that's the great thing about it when people interact with us you know because like I said if we said one thing to change somebody's life that's that's I did my part Right. I wouldn't have missed it for the world. And I do want yes. to thank you for having but me on your... Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. But we will talk. We will talk this week and try to figure something out, and um, we'll go from there. All right. So thank you so much for having me on, and it's been a pleasure, and thank all the guests that tuned in tonight. Yes. Um, I, I really, yes. really appreciate it. And I really yes. appreciate all y'all feedback. It means a lot. Yes, it does. Yes. But yeah, but I'll make sure I give Alicia your information um, so she can um, contact you as well. Um, so yeah, okay. it's been great. So I love you, my friend. Love you too. I see you. Bye. Right. Bye. Well, thank you guys for the hearts, the love. Um, just thank you for... Um, you know, tuning in to Hot Topics with Donna with um, Jacob Anderson, also known as King Jacob. Um, I will get with uh, my friends that want to connect with him as far as getting their writing started. Um, thank you for the hearts. I just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you. I don't take um, it for granted that you guys come and hang out with me. So just just know that I love you and I like the feedback. I, I love the feedback and I like it when I have guests on here that we can laugh and we can talk about serious issues like we did about, you know, the gun violence and the suicide and all that kind of stuff because people, people are really suffering and, you know, it's time for us to stop like turning a blind eye to things that we see and it's time for us to reach back to these young people because we're losing them at an alarming rate and everybody just seems to think that it's okay and it's not okay because it's our job to make sure we 
are producing successful kids, no matter if they're black or white or whatever. It is our job to make sure we're educating them. It's our job to say, hey, you got this. It's our job to say, you are special. You are someone. Because every one of us that's on this live, we know some kid that may be in trouble. We may have them in our families. We may have them as friends. So if you have any young adult, please tell them that they're valued. Because sometimes they get pushed aside because we want our little ones. We just want to nurture our little ones and say, oh, you got this. You're going to be awesome. But even though our three and four-year-olds and even our infants need that, our preteens, high schoolers, middle schoolers, they need the same encouragement. They need the same love. They need the same push instead of us turning our nose and say, well, they're almost grown. So until tomorrow, I may be doing another live tomorrow. I haven't um, confirmed it yet, but if I do, I will post it um, tomorrow. If not, then I will see you next week um, with another um also um, interview with Hot Topics with Donna. You know, Hot Topics with Donna, we are honest, open, and transparent. And until next time, I say I love you, good night, and just have an amazing, amazing night.